Well, hey everyone, this is Pastor Steve, and I am joined by Pastor Tom McFarland, and um, we're here just to, to talk a little bit about life and about what's been happening. It's been a while since I've done one of the videos here for the church, and um, Tom, it's great to see you, and um, you know, we have a lot to talk about tonight, buddy, and I know Tom, you don't have to say any more. He's got a lot of things he can add. Um, which is great stuff. And so we're coming to you, first of all, to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Amen. And um, as you're watching this, this is about, uh, you know, maybe roughly like a week out from Christmas, a little more than that. And so I asked Tom, you know, this is a normal night that we kind of hang out together and kind of like bond and so forth. I asked Tom if he would come on here, and you're going to see a lot of them, um, to kind of share his thoughts about this crazy and wacky year. That it's been so um tom first of all welcome and uh you know rh media network we're going to continue with it as a as a ministry and i know that we're going to be doing a lot of stuff you have your own youtube channel am i right on that i do cool thomas mcfarland yep so don't forget to check that out when we get the website up and running in a couple weeks like the way we really want it i'm going to put his link on there along with their ministry called light in the darkness him and judy so you're going to hear more about that soon. Um, so we're kind of in the throes and in the mix of things. But in the meantime, Tom, it's been a whirlwind of a year, man. It's been a whirlwind of a year. Um, from January, I mean, people were talking about 2020 vision. 2020, that's all I kept hearing about. I was so excited. I'm thinking to myself, we got momentum in the church. Everything is going great. You know, like we're just going to kind of go this way now. 2020 vision, everything's going to accelerate, and then COVID. So what are your thoughts, man? Take, take me back in the, in the life of Tom McFarland, January 1st to now. You know, just, just what, what's on your heart about what, what was going on then, what, what you were experiencing, and then, like, where do you think God's taking this thing? Well, January 1st, for me, is, um, I mean... Obviously, as a Christian, I'm not doing the drinking thing. Right. Um, I don't go out on New Year's Eve. I don't even stay up to watch the ball drop. Because for me, that's a big ball drop. <laughs> and every pun is intended. But, sure. Um, yeah. My New Year consists of prayer. Mm-hmm. January, I'm praying. Okay. Because I have to get a focus on what God wants out of this new year. Sure. Um, January 1st, one of the first things I do is I call up uh, the park in Mays Landing. I make a reservation for our family reunion. Uh, we've been doing that over 20 years. Wow. And um, so... Unfortunately, by the time June rolled around, it was canceled. Mm -hmm. And I would have gone and done it anyway, but, mm -hmm. but um, the park was closed. Right. So, right. so, right away, I don't celebrate the way the world celebrates. Right. The Bible says that we're in the world, but we're not of it. Yep. So, mm -hmm. that should, you know basically clue you into the direction I'm going with this. Sure. Um, in the Bible, God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Neither are your ways my ways. Mm -hmm. So, he doesn't think the way we do. Right. So, I don't think the way the world does. I've been a Christian since 1974. Wow. That's awesome. Well, several weeks ago. <laughs> and, uh, seems like it. <laughs> well, it actually seems a lot longer though. Mm. But at any rate, yeah. So in those in that period of time, you know, I've read the Bible many times. I'm currently reading it. Um, you know, I always try to to be in the Word mm -hmm. because, as I said, my thoughts. God says my thoughts are not your thoughts. Yep. So. I want to get his thoughts into me. Mm. 
because basically that's faith, that, that's what faith is yeah. is lining out us ourselves up with what God wants yeah. I'm yeah. agreeing with God when I when I exercise faith in in an area or on a topic yeah that's one of the things I love about you man you're you're inspiring to many including me because um, you know when we got together it challenged me in my faith it challenged me to go higher in my walk with God it challenged not in a contest but just it challenged me to go higher because I kind of felt like once COVID hit my faith was really getting rocked and I, I and all of a sudden the church just kind of like disappeared and I mean, I remember the, the Zoom Bible study and all that. I mean, it was weird. It was like, and I know a lot of people are doing it now, as a matter of fact. But back then, to not have a physical presence with people and not really know what way to go, even as a, you know, as a pastor of a small church, it was like, where do we go from here? Like, like I remember the mask thing, and I was like pulling up the Chick-fil-A, and I'm like, we're, in, we're going into t- through tents. And they're telling us to park places, and we couldn't even go in the building. And it was just a weird feeling for me. I mean, what was going through your mind at that time? I mean, was it a big deal or no big deal? Like, what What, what do you think, Tom? Take me back to, like, February, March when all this started going down. Well, it's, al- it's almost like, um, you know, otherworldly, mm. you know. Um, I know I come from a background where my parents were both medical people. Mm. And so being around people with masks and gloves and gowns, and I've seen a lot of that in my life. Mm. Um, my dad would do rounds at the hospital. And um, as a small boy, sometimes I would go with him. And um, so I saw a lot of stuff. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. Um, Obviously, I didn't go into patients' rooms and things like that, but, mm. but, you know, I was with my dad, and he sheltered my situation, and, you know, he controlled where I went, obviously. Sure. Um, but I grew up in that environment. Um, the, uh, the property w- where his office was, it had a wooded area behind it, uh, and um, it was kind of fun to go over there. Cool, you know. But um, yeah, so I've been around that my entire life. That sort of situation, seeing people with masks and gloves and stuff, and mm. and you know, again, being raised in that environment, um, I knew, for instance, if I was uh, sanding wood to mm-hmm. put on a mask because I don't want to breathe that in. Gotcha. So, so that was very natural um, for you. My mother was tr- a trained surgical nurse, mm-hmm. um, and so we learned about sterile fields. We learned uh, cross-contamination. You know, well, you've washed your hands. Now, don't touch anything else, mm. you know, because we're going to prepare some food. Interesting. You know, so this is what... The, the ground rules when I you was, were already there. I was a kid. Yeah, so, wow, that's cool. So, so I go into a store, and um, and I see people with gloves on, and they're touching my food, and then I pay them, and they take the money with the gloved hand that they then put on mm. the next person's food. Oh wow! So that kind of freaks me out. So um, wait a minute, was that was that like during COVID or was that before COVID? Um, it happens all the time. Gotcha. Okay. You know, uh, people in public, they're they're making sandwiches. You know, they're wearing gloves. Mm-hmm. Typically. Hopefully, yeah. Um, one time, um, I'm on the parkway, and the toll taker is um, wearing uh, latex gloves. I can tell the difference, mm. and um, the hand that's touching the money, the, it's it's almost black with dirt, mm. and I didn't have change. If I had change, I would just toss it in the bin, okay? Mm-hmm. But and this was, you know, I, before I had my 
my easy case. Gotcha. But, um, at any rate, I give him the buck, and if I had realized what was going to happen next, I would have just driven away and let him have the dollar. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. But when he gave me the change, he touched my hand with that filthy glove, and I was like skeeved out. <laughs> so I'm not... I'm not the average person driving down the Parkway. Gotcha. You know? um, I've been described by uh, co-workers as a germaphobe. I was going to ask you that in so many so, words, but yeah, okay. You know, but it's just that I know about it. Mm-hmm. And knowing is knowledge. Yep. And I may I say this, I hardly ever get sick. Mm. Hardly ever. Now, it may be because... Of the way mm-hmm. I was raised, and I know not to tr- cross contaminate. And so, you, so this whole thing was pretty much a no brainer for you because you had already, you really already kind of came from that environment. It was kind of an easy fit if you if you did have to wear a mask or avoid touching people or whatever. It was really no big deal because of your medical family, if you would. They taught you that from the get go, right? So. Um, so with that, fast forward into the summer, and we have these shutdowns, we have these lockdowns. I mean, what was it like for you and Judy? What, were, were you guys kind of isolated yourselves, or what, did you find still find ways to get out and do things or see things? What was it like? Well, you know, the ministry that we're involved in, uh, we, we get things. From people mm-hmm. that we d- redistribute mm-hmm. so uh, we'll get a phone call uh, we have some clothing we want to donate we don't know where to take it mm-hmm. well we know people that do that mm-hmm. you know and we know people that need that are in need because we know people sure you know yeah and we're attentive to people's needs mm-hmm. okay uh, so and and my wife has a gifting in these areas where um, somebody will give us something and she, if not immediately, knows where it goes. She'll pray about it. Mm-hmm. And of course, we both pray. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we we pretty much figure out where it goes. You sure. Know? There's sure. a reason why God is allowing people to give that to me mm-hmm. because we're going to make sure it gets to a person in need. Gotcha. And uh, so we'll get phone calls about food as well. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, sometimes it's um, it's already prepared. Mm. A lot of times it isn't. Mm. You know, I have a box of food. Uh, I don't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Can you figure out somebody to give it to? Gotcha. We get these phone calls, and um, so this is what we do. So during COVID, did, did you see a spike in, in requests and, and people calling you, or did you see it go down? Um, well, at the risk of sounding um, um, blasé about it, it was business as usual. Gotcha. I mean, gotcha. I, don't, I didn't see a spike at all. Mm-hmm. I, it just... We always get phone calls. Just did it. And okay. This is something we've been doing this for years, mm. and um, gotcha. you know, okay. I, I don't know how. I don't even know how how that all evolved mm. as far as um, you know how these you know people got our name and stuff like that. But it happens. It and, happens. Yeah. And you know we have a you know we have contacts in other counties that call us. That's awesome. You know. And, um, you know, so, and it's kind of like, uh, you know, Judy and I back and forth, we'll say, you know, what, uh, you know, like we'll get a load of stuff in our vehicle and then, um, you know, it's amazing that within a day mm-hmm. or so, mm-hmm. um, everything's gone mm. and it seems that no sooner is it empty that it's filled again. Wow. You know, it happens like that. And, uh, so... Hmm. So you, you just basically didn't miss a beat. You just kind of went through it, kept doing it during COVID, just kept reaching out to people, kept, you know, people kept contacting you. It was kind of business as usual. And now it leads us to fast forward into where we are today. Where do you see 
God taking this country, this this world at this point? Where, where, where do you see? I mean, obviously, you know, you, we've linked up Restoration House of Hope Ministries, you know, International Ministries, and um, you know, we we partnered, and there's a lot of things we're all going to be doing. And I'm just I'm sitting here thinking like. Where, where is this thing going as far as the world goes? And even this nation, what do you, what do you think, Tom? What do you think God's saying? I mean, is it, you know, we, we pay attention to the prophetic movement and so forth because we do have prophetic things happening in our church. You know, are the prophets all right? I mean, are they, are what they're predicting as far as not only President Trump, you know, remaining in office along with Vice President Pence, but, um, the prosperity that he's talking, they're talking about thereafter in the new year. I mean, what do you, what do you think? Because there's, there's a few I've heard that have said it's going to be like, whoa, like it's kind of like judgment type of thing. And then I've heard most of them say the same thing, which is, you know, we're not only going to move forward, but we're going to move forward in a new way, in a bigger way. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I think that um, God always has a always has a plan yep. and where we fit into it is we get with him mm-hmm. you know that that um, you know there's several different terms for this you know uh, some people call it a quiet time where they you know they spend time alone with God mm-hmm. some people call it you know their uh, their prayer closet some people call it you know their secret place with the Lord gotcha. it's a place where you want to to be in a spot where you can communicate with God where there's not a lot of distraction because mm-hmm. frankly that'll shipwreck mm-hmm. a good conversation mm-hmm. no matter who it is yeah okay yeah and I like to be able to talk out loud to God mm. because it keeps me focused mm-hmm. and it keeps me from being distracted, mm-hmm. you know, because if it's all just in my head, I mean, I, and and if it's in my home, I could think of a thousand different things that I could be doing, yeah. you know, yeah. and, you know, probably everyone who hears this will say, say the same thing, because cool. this is, especially people like us that were that are task oriented, yeah, you know, we want to get stuff done, yep, you know, mm, preach um, brother, so. So that's number one. I think moving forward, mm-hmm. um, we need to get into that spot with God to find out mm-hmm. where you as an individual fit into the plan of God. Gotcha. Because the basic concept here is, and, and this is straight from the Bible, that God has a wonderful plan for your life and that he will do that execute that plan in your life Mm -hmm. if you allow him to Mm. you see so and this is part of the purpose of reading the bible is to get on board with what he wants yeah you know yeah that's a great point i think um i think you're dead on and i think um to add to that tom as you were talking about it you know turn it over to the audience here for a moment that is an interesting question to kind of wrap up on. Where do you fit into this? Where is it that you that you fit into a God's jigsaw puzzle, if you would? What piece of the puzzle are you? You can't just have it where all these pieces come together and then there's one little blank or two little blanks or whatever because the picture will never be clear. But what is it that you that that you're looking at right now in this whole thing and thinking God can't He can't put me in that puzzle or I don't even know where to begin in that puzzle. Well, let me just encourage you to, to think about this. As pieces of puzzle fits and is put together one at a time, when that picture comes together, if you do the right photography and it's really, really good cut, you can't even tell it's a, it's a puzzle. It just looks like a picture. If it's really done right, it's really premium, and it's not like a dollar store deal, sometimes you can't even tell it's a puzzle. And I think that's what we're headed toward. I believe in optimism. I believe in my heart. Even though I struggle with it at times, 
I'm still looking positive at the new year that I said to my wife uh, today, Tom, I said, you know, it's been seven, eight years. No, it's been eight years now since we've uh, taken our family to Disney World. It was something we used to do every Christmas, like every like first week of December. And it was a lot of fun. And, and I, I just miss being out. I miss people. And as much as I love technology, I, I, I love, you know, our interactions and and seeing people and, and going to see places and so forth. And when everything's locked down, I just felt like it was like a jail. It was like almost like one big nightmare. But if I look at it a different way, it can propel you into a deeper walk with God. Because doing all this stuff, you might not think about him as much. But when everything is tight into the wall and you're forced it gets you to think a lot about things. And my brother, um, I can't wait because in, in the 27th, we were ordaining uh, my wife and Tom and Judy as pastors of the church. And um, they're going to be recognized as ordained ministers. And I can't wait because I think it's a long time coming, my brother. And I thank you for the wisdom that you bring to me every week, that you bring to many. It's just the beginning between us of how we can propel each other and then propel the kingdom. And um, you and your wife are amazing people. And I want to go on record saying that. And I thank you for your support of this ministry. And now we're locking arms and going forward into battle and war. But to the, the, to the viewers, I just want to thank you for being a part of this. And if you haven't sown a seed into this ministry, may I encourage you to visit our website, rhmillville.org. And at minimum, pray for our ministry. Because we have a lot of things ahead that we want to do to change the world. And you can be a part of that. So, Tom, I just want to thank you for being here today. And it was just kind of an impromptu. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more of this. We have uh, podcasts I'm going to be cranking out again. But um, I really do believe that you're right. Where do we fit in? Even as a ministry, even as ministries, where do we fit in this whole thing? How can we help change the world, right? So keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for, for keeping going and being a, a, you know, an example and being steady and, of course, bailing me out many times <laughs> and, uh, and just being there. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And um, you know, don't forget, you can go to our YouTube channel. It's RH Media Network. But more importantly, go to our website, rhmobile.org. Um, we're going to have a whole new look shortly, but, um, you know, we still have some things up there. And join us on Sundays at 11.30 a.m. Uh, we broadcast live from Facebook, and we'd love to have you, and uh, it's a great time. So, Tom, thank you, my brother. God bless you guys, and uh, have a great, great holiday. Take care.